So if you cannot find information, accurate information of how much you get get paid, I think the only alternative you have is to really think hard of how much money you need to live, how much money you need to do a job that will take you a long time and will require. And when you think how much money you need for a job, you need to think about not just about the hours that you spend, but also the amount of investment that you have taken to get to this place, you know, as well. So because you need to pay back all those long hours of learning and all those long hours of actually researching to know this effect or all those long hours that you, all those weekends that you took to learn certain things on Udini or certain things on Nuke, you know. So you kind of have to like think about as, okay, how much money do I need for rent? How much money do I need for food? How much money do I need to research? How much money do I need to, for some entertainment? And then you go to that level, to that value, and then you kind of think, okay, now I'm going to put maybe uh, something on top for profit so that I can invest on something else. You know, let's say 40% on top or 50% on top, or maybe you can go even higher if you can. And then stick with that gun. And if you feel comfortable with that value and you think, okay, I can live with this value. I can also have a future with this value. I can put some money on the side. I can also invest on in my equipment. And then I can ask them. And I've had a lot of clients where I learned the hard way, where I gave them a value and you know, I told them, okay, 400 a day. And then they just said right away, yes. And which means, oh shit, yeah. they, they said <laughs> yes right away. That's I not good. So like, yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> next time you say 500, you know? Yeah. And, and if they say yes right away, then, oh shit, I'm gonna say 700 next time then. You know, you just have to like, like go with the flow as well with your clients and, and always understand that probably you will be getting less than they can probably do and I don't think people should think that it's being robbed it's almost like if the money is enough for you to live yeah, have a comfortable to. life and also invest then it's enough you don't have to be greedy about it as well you know what I mean like if, if it's enough for you to have a good life and still evolve as an artist then you know there's no point of you trying to get more or trying to be a hardball on that you know as well mm -hmm. so that's kind of my main advice for people starting and also people working in the industry now. I think the more that you kind of take note of like, hey, I said this and then they said this, like the more that you feel like, okay, next time I'll try this. And yeah. it's also too, like if if you're happy with those numbers, then that's all that matters, you know? Um, exactly. Yeah. Like anyway, but. I think that's really cool. I think that's, it's just important to, um, you also got to think about like, well, you know, do I need any downtime or what if they come back with revisions and exactly. um, how do I, how exactly. do I kind of tally that into? But yeah, a lot of times like companies, they might be working on something big, but they, they got the project um, because they underbid. And so it kind of like ripples through to you as well. But I think the key thing is to be comfortable walking away um, yeah. rather than like if you know your numbers and they come back, they're like, well, we want it for this much. Like there's been projects where someone's come to me, they're like, how much to do this? And I've said like 20 grand or something. And then they, you know, basically are like, that's too much. And it's like, yeah, you could probably get someone really cheap to do that. And they'll probably charge yeah. a lot less, but for me to do it, and I'm not saying because I'm amazing, it's just, I'm going to charge that because I can do another job instead for that much. So those are my numbers. Yeah. And if you don't want to do it, that's fine. That's a frank discussion you have to have with your client. And again, having the courage to walk away, you know, because mm. maybe it's not going to be a fit for you. You know, if they want something cheaper, their their expectation also will be lower. And then you're going to be upset because you're going to deliver something subpar. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, you got in some money, but then you did something you don't even like or you, you're even proud of. And you're not even going to put it on your reel. You don't really believe it on it as well. So then it becomes a... It's almost like you're not paired up, you know, it's not the correct client for you, almost, mm -hmm. you know. I think also that fits in to this conversation for sure. That yeah. drives me nuts when I work with artists and like halfway through the job, they'll start saying like, oh, I'm not being paid enough and, you know, yeah, all yeah. this kind of stuff. <laughs> and they get all jaded and like, especially they're saying it to the entire room, like that brings morale down for everyone. And the thing is like, that's your fault. Like if you're not happy with what you're being paid, then ask for more money. But for you to then accept like agree to terms and then later be like they're ripping yeah. me off and you know they're the enemy it's like well wait a minute we gave you what you asked for and now you're yeah. upset that you should have gotten more that's the kind of stuff that drives me nuts because it's just it's like if you're not happy do the job that you agreed to do but then renegotiate afterwards say hey you saw the performance i did on the last job and i did all this amazing stuff and you know 
next time around, I, I feel like I'm worth this. Do you agree? And if you've done a great job yeah. rather than complaining the whole time, then they're going to say, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Renegotiate. Yeah. But I think that comes back again to the fact that people sometimes forget to actually double check how much money is worth for them. Because mm -hmm. I sometimes think that people see see these figures, you know, they see, oh, someone is earning, I don't know how many thousands per day. Oh, someone is earning 700. Yeah. They're getting so much money and I'm getting so little, but they just need like, sometimes you need to understand that first it might be fake. It might be fake news. It might not even be true. The other part of it is, well, it might have to do with the experience of the person or the contacts of the person or the person is maybe, you know, like 30 years experience or something or brings a lot to the table or is doing something else. So it's not really comparable. But the other thing I keep going back to that, you need to understand how much you need for you. And I think sometimes we suffer from understanding that we are in a very privileged job, you know, super privileged. We are getting paid to do something we love, that we enjoy and that we like, highly technical, highly technological, almost very few people can even do this job. It's almost like rocket science. It is, it's very complicated, although it's simple for us, but for most people, it's rocket science, you know? And sometimes we forget that we are on a very privileged situation of being working on something we love and still get very well paid. Even if you're not getting as much as you think you should be getting, you're still getting really well paid. If we start thinking about like, if you're getting, even if you're a junior and if you're already getting like, people that work on a supermarket or work on a coffee shop here in Britain, they are earning like, you know, 15,000, 13,000 a year, you know, like, like, or 70, maybe they're lucky to get 17,000 a year. You know, imagine that if you think about it, where a VFX artist is probably getting that in three months, you know, like, or in four months. and. I'm not saying, you know, it's not your fault, of course, that someone else, like it, it has to do with a, a lot of different things on your life that happen that someone is doing one job or another, but we are very fortunate. And I I feel blessed every day. And I, I, I guess maybe I feel like that because, you know, I come from a poor background and I was in Portugal and I, I was not rich. I had no money. I had to count all my little cents, you know? So I, I really look at money in a, in a way like, shit, man, I, I'm so fortunate, at least I have it, you know? And at least I have a job and I do what I like. So I never really get that jaded when I when I hear, oh shit, I could have gotten double that or I could have gotten three times that or, right. you know, I got enough, I got what I needed and I got, I think it was worth what I got, you know? I think as long as you feel like that, you're good. You, you're, you're good with yourself, you know? It's funny because when you're trying to figure out how much to charge yourself, like you've got to fit, think of that air conditioner in your apartment. Of course. No, so yeah. it's, Electricity, it's just on a, a internet, scale. everything. Even if the internet is only 10 bucks, it doesn't matter. It's 10 bucks. You have mm -hmm. to pay. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. People forget that, you know, <laughs> like they forget all those things, I think. Especially now, I, I guess most people are working from home and that mm -hmm. is a problem. Like people are now spending a lot more money on their house with internet, with heating, with internet, with electricity with gas, you know, even the, the functioning of the house itself, the computer wear and tear, the monitor that they need to buy, like all those things are mm -hmm. costs that happen and you need to just find a way of calculating that. Let's put it on a spreadsheet, try to calculate how much it costs per month, yeah. try to break it down, you know, like, like, okay, how much do I need? How much is my bill usually of electricity? How much is my bill of phone, you know? And how, how much is the average, you know, just put it on a spreadsheet. Once you see all the numbers together, you start really having an idea of what's going on every month. And you start, oh, shit, I actually have a thousand pounds on this or two thousand right. pounds on that. And I think that also when it comes to money, it's about, you know, before you start thinking I'm not being paid enough and everything else, it's I think it's best to start internally and look at, well, why is that? Like, is there something on my end before blaming everyone else that I need more money right now because I'm, I'm going broke? um is to figure out like well maybe i'm not budgeting myself correctly because that's one thing that i've found is usually the problem is that most people they want more money but the problem is if they get more money they're just going to spend more money it's it's a leaking yeah. ship and yeah. you've got to fix those leaks before you can start thinking about everything else so i always say the quickest way to get a pay rise is to actually do a budget on yourself and figure out like wow i'm blowing all this cash on all this different stuff and if I were just to fix those leaks, then I'm going to save 10, 20 grand a year. There's my pay rise yeah. before I start trying to get more money in. So, cause again, yeah, like the more absolutely. money comes in, the more leaks that you're going to identify if you're, um, you know, not yeah. taking care of that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. 
I'm, I'm glad you're saying that. I'm really glad to say that.